so let's play a little bit with Harma processes. Let's create a new script. We're going to use the library forecast for almost anything, and also the library grid extra to do some fancy plottings. Okay, so here we go. So first of all, let's create some data. Let's say data is going to be something like, oh, let's call this Arma, Arma 11. It's going to be an Arima model created with the function Arima sim. And we have a couple of choices there. So we can explicitly say the order. So we can say order 101. And then of course we have to specify the parameters. So everything that is, sorry, everything that is behind this this parameter is going to be the coefficients phi 1 of the auto regressive part. In this case, just one parameter, point 0.8, let's say, and the moving average part, point 0.8. And let's create, I don't know, let's say n equals 150. Okay, so this is an ARMA process. We can auto plot this one, ARMA 11, and here we go. We can also try to plot the or correlation function, AGF ARMA 11. And the partial error correlation function. Oh, sorry, P A G F. Okay, and here we go. We can put everything together. So actually, we can use this grid arrange function, and we can plot out a plot arma eleven. And also, I'm going to copy this inside. So we have a nice grid with all the plots in one, okay? We can also save some time and, and some keystrokes using the function ggts display that does anything for us. Okay, but it is always nice to have some ideas there. Okay, so now you can see that we have some oscillations there. We also have some trends, so we don't have a clue of what type, type of data do we have. So actually, we, let's uh, start simpler. So let's do simply an R1 process and compare. So we're going to do almost the same. So let's increase a little bit the size. Let's say 250, for instance. And this is going to be an R1 process. Again, we can type this, uh, or this is completely equivalent. So if I'm not saying what's the order, but I'm saying the values of R or MA, this is implicitly the same as above. And now again, GGT, GGTS display, R1. And here we go, this is one of the things that we discussed. So we have this kind of exponential decay be because of this autoregressive part. But if you take a look at the partial or correlation function, we only see one bar, uh, which is lying outside the, the dashed blue lines. And the, correlation, the first bar is around 0.8, which is the parameter that I'm using here. Sorry, let's plot this one. Now let's do an MA1 process. Same idea. I don't need to specify the order, but I'm saying here that the coefficient MA is 0.8. And now again, let's do a GGTS display. And again, so we have this trend there, which is oscillating because of the sign of that, but only one bar in the our correlation function. If this is negative, for instance, if you want to compare, now you see that we have loss this oscillation, so uh, this is, uh, let's say, monotonous in this part of the graph, but still, we have only one part here. Now we can do things more complicated, so let's play with an R2 process, and now here we have to use a vector, so this is going to be 0.8, and the second one, let's say, 0.2, and here we go. Oh, sorry, there's some bracket somewhere here. And here we go. So now you see that we have clearly two bars there. We still cannot tell clearly here because we still have some trend, decaying trend. But again, this is a very good clue that we are doing things well. Now let's do some fittings. So let's start. Let's play it directly with this Arma 1.1. So let's call fit1. I'm going to use capital A function, which is the one in the forecast library. So Arima with capital A, and now the data, Arima 1.1, and then the model, let's start with a simple autoregressive one model, zero, and here we go. And now we can plot the fit to see if the, if the roots are where they have to be. We only have one of these plots because we don't have any moving average part. 
you can see that this is inside, so far so good. We can plot a summary of the function. Summary of the function. And here we have the coefficients. This is significant, okay? But still we don't have a, a good idea of what is going on there. So let's plot G, uh, check residuals feed one. And this is interesting. This part is, uh, you, you're also, uh, this looks pretty normal, but the interesting part is there. So the residuals are not noise, so you still have a couple of bars. And this could be a signature that we miss this moving average part. Okay, so this is not a definite proof, but it's something going on there. So let's try another fit. Let's try fit number two. It's going to be only a moving average model. Okay, so let's run this. The auto plot is pushing this to zero. This is, sounds crazy, but this is because the Arima method tried to push all the all the roots of all the functions inside the circle. So it, the best that the model can do is pushing this to minus one in this case. So this doesn't look a very good model. So let's go back to check residuals. And now you can see that we are missing something there. Let's take a look at the summary. Again, we cannot tell anything. This looks significant, but remember that this is an artifact of, of pushing everything inside the cycle. And then we can actually plot the partial error correlation function for the residuals. So fit to residuals. And here we go. So this is a clear clue that we are missing the now the, the, the auto regressive part with coefficient one. So now let's try method number three or model number three, R my 11. Order is going to be 101, which is actually the, the process we, with which we generated the data. And now let's copy some of these things. Okay, let's just use some snippets. Fit three. Okay, the, the, the roots are okay, so are inside the cycle, and actually the, they are not pushing to one, so that means that the, the fit is going to be much better than before. Let's plot a summary of the fit. Again, coefficients are okay and are pretty close to the original ones, so the original ones were 0.8, and this is closer to 0.7 and this is 2.9, but it's not bad. And again, let's check the residuals and see what happens. Check residuals, fit three. And this looks nice because now this is much more Gaussian than before. All the lags, all the, all the correlation for different lags are inside the, that part. And what about the, the partial or correlation function of the residuals? Fit three residuals. Also is between the bars, so everything is okay. Okay, one thing that we haven't covered so far is model comparison. So let's compare all the fits. And now I'm going to use these parameters. So basically a Kaike information criterion, the, one, the corrected one, and the Bayesian information criterion. So for the first feed, and, and, and remember that the lower the better. So for the first feed, this is 482. For the second feed, this is 518, which is much worse. And for the third feed, this is the lower, the lowest of the three, 415. So clearly this method, this model is the best of, of, all, of all the feeds, and actually it makes a lot of sense. So now let's plot the data. So let's auto plot ARMA 11 and then add different layers. Oh, sorry, I have my snippets there. No, not here. Auto layer, fit one, fit it. Auto layer, fit two, fit it. And auto layer, oh, sorry. Or a layer fit three fitted. And here we go. So we have different comparisons. They are not very good, but you can see that fit number one and fit number the, the green one and, and the red one are not that good at different points. This is not very clear, but, uh, but also we can use the good old pair panels from the library psych. So I'm going to create a data frame with ARMA 11 and all these feeds. Okay, this is three and this is two. And here we go, so this is not very neat, but you can see that, uh, you cannot see anything here. But you can see that the correlation is very good in all cases, so you can see that oh, they are capturing pretty well the series, 
but this is the best of them you cannot see anything let's plot let's use directly correlations and here you go you can see that the highest correlation is between the data and, and the, between the data and the fields is the, between the data and this parameter so this is another m measure of goodness of of the fit okay so let's say that fit 3 is the winner and now we can do a couple of different things so we can test the coefficients remember that the things that we have to do not only fitting but also checking all, all the stuff so we have checked the residuals we have checked the roots of the polynomials and actually let, let, i'll explain later another thing related to that and now we can check the coefficients so coef test fit number three and oh sorry and you can see that both coefficients are significant so we can be happy with uh, that that sort of fit i was saying that there is another way there is a library called urca urca and actually this have this function which is called rk kpss that i will explain in another video but actually th this is giving you an idea of how stationary is your data oh sorry uh, yes so whenever this value is higher than 0.05 that means that you can be pretty sure that the roots that that this pose that we have had uploaded be are above fit three that this pose that these roots are going to be inside this cycle so this is a kind of statistical way of checking but I, as usual i prefer to to trust my eyes in in this case 